We are back after four teams Hi. in five weeks. <laughs> and we are we are ready to be home and rest. Yes. Uh, it was a good time. We sent you all a video about halfway through that that uh that rush and um uh, we started with a medical team, followed up by a leadership conference in which we taught and uh, had 12 hours of classes. Um, that was followed by a men's retreat for just the male leadership in Sona Segura, and then they split off and did a women's retreat while they were doing that. Mm -hmm. And then we finally closed out this stretch of teams probably what will be our busiest church of the year with teams. Uh, with a team from South Carolina, uh, and we went out to the countryside and did a lot of evangelism, and that sort of thing. Unfortunately, uh, don't have a ton of footage from these things because we were both translating a lot. And, you know, it's kind of weird when you're translating for a medical team to whip out a phone and be recording this little old grandmother as she reveals medical history. Or, you know, stick a camera in someone's face when you're evangelizing. So, we're just going to share with you a little bit what went on. And, um, but after this week, we're going to have about a month of normal uh, church growing and discipleship. And then we'll have a big team, which we can stick a camera in their face at the end of July to host our family camp. And so, uh, yeah, we... I had a nice stretch, it's exhausting, but good kind of exhausting, mm -hmm. you know, kind of like after you play pickup game of basketball or something, and, uh, or soccer, and um, it was really good. Four very different teams uh, with very different purposes while they were here, um, but each one was really nice. And, and the last time we left you all off, we were about to go to the men's retreat. Um, and, and I apologize if I keep looking down, I have a really bad glare in my glasses, as you can see now. It looks like I have a white eye patch, but they're just my glasses, so I'm, I'm trying to keep from blinding you as you watch us. Um, but in Men's Retreat, we had a pastor uh, come from Arkansas, Little Rock, Arkansas, and teach us basically about Nehemiah and uh, how God led him and how he uh, showed certain attributes of leadership in rebuilding the wall in Jerusalem mm -hmm. to show us, you know, how to carry out a project, how to set a goal, how to achieve that goal. You know, as Christians, our goal should not be limited to our capacities, rather. Um, they should be God-sized visions, and that's kind of a cliche, I'm sure some of you all have heard, but he really pointed it out, you know, we have this guy who's basically not basically, he is a cupbearer to the king, and he decides to become an engineer and architect, and with God's help, um, he finishes that project in a matter of, of months, you know, and uh, so that was really cool to have that on a men's retreat. Actually, one of the boys from Cachora, from the orphanage, was able to come, and I said, boys, he's a young man now, and he's, he'll be 17 soon. Uh, he'll finish high school at the end of this year, and so we're 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 establishing more and more relationship with him uh, to see him grow, with the hopes that he gets more and more involved in the church, and that's why we wanted to bring him to this men's leadership retreat, mm -hmm. and that was really neat to see and, and work with some of the guys who we're, we've been seeing growing. Um, and while we're at the men's retreat, actually, the women had kind of a I want to say a women's retreat because it wasn't open to all the women it was, and there was no host that came and, no. and led it, but it was it our was. wives <laughs> who said, well, if they're going to go off and do something, we're going to go off and do yeah. something. So do you want to share a little bit yeah, about that? Yeah, we didn't have anybody coming to teach, like you said, from the States or somewhere else. But we divided the time that the, the weekend that we had, and we shared something. So I shared like a couple sessions, like a devotion, devotional, devotion time, and then uh, Gabby, uh, Pastor Cesar's wife, shared 
uh, something else with the women and also Theo. So it was exciting, it was really cool, it, it was um, a great time, just women, we were able to share, we were able to um, give advice, receive advice. Mm -hmm. They talked about how to um, how to be a better mom for those who are moms, for those who will be mothers at some point. And we just uh, studied the Bible together, so it was a really great time. We yeah. enjoyed it very much. Yeah, and then we came back together, then had a few days of uh, rest. But a team came in from South Carolina, we went out to yes. the countryside, as I said, and, and we uh, did some evangelism, uh, home visits way out in the countryside. Very cold. Very it was so cold. cold. We got down to 28 here, which is very low. Yes. Very, very low here, especially at altitude. It feels like it's much colder. Yeah. And um, that was just a really good time to spend with them, to meet new people uh, with the hopes of growing our uh, the, the church and seeing mm -hmm. the people come to know Christ. We were able to visit school. Um, well, that was a really good time, and we got back, and now we're kind of looking at doing some more stuff. So what's happening now is, uh, over the next few weeks, um, I'll be taking over teaching Genesis in the house churches on Tuesday, which Pastor Cesar has been teaching. Um, right now we're on Genesis 30, so we're over halfway through Genesis um, and that way he can focus on some of the other house churches, planning some other house churches kind of outside of the city. Um, and then taking over some of our house churches, my house churches, will be Jackson and Renato, who you know, you know, we've been discipling and, mm -hmm. and been working with. And uh, that way I can go and start some new house churches. So what's nice is we're actually finally seeing that disciple step into the role of discipler. And we're starting to kind of see people move up the chain, I guess, for lack of a better way to express it. And uh, we're seeing the house church network grow. Jackson just started a house church yesterday, actually. At, her, uh, at his house. At, at his house. Um, That's for some people to go to. And uh, yeah, it's, it is exciting to see that, that growth. Um, and so just please be praying for that and for... Their growth as teachers, um, I know uh, that's a big step to go from being taught to teaching formally. You know, when you have new believers sitting there staring at you and, and asking questions. So just be praying for that and, and it's really excited to see where that's going uh, right now. But... Uh, we're seeing a lot of growth now, over the next few weeks, we'll be able to, to invest in that growth more mm -hmm. now that the teams are gone. Um, the teams are a blessing, but we're definitely happy to get back to just kind of working on the people here in the yeah. city. The routine. Yeah, the routine. routine. Routine is good. <laughs> um, get back to working on some music, then working on some teaching, working on that discipleship. So this coming week, just be praying for us and... Uh, that we continue growing the church, we're invested in the church, that, um, you know, we don't have four weeks teams and then say, well, all right, we did our job, but that we turn back and really focus on what is our primary job, which is mm -hmm. discipling and raising up leaders here in the city of Cusco. Um, but next time we'll be talking to you, we'll be sharing a little bit about what, how that's coming along and what, the, what that's looking like. So we'll see you uh, next week.